And we are live. All right, folks, welcome to the Historical Fencing Guild's live, weekly live stream. I am about four minutes early because it actually loaded up quicker than I expected. This is a, a good sign. I'm hoping that this means my net will hold out for this broadcast. Well, um, as always, my name's Nick and as long as I can't have my swords, my uh, ladies, here, I'm going to bring my resources out here to the internet. Now, um, we had some comments and questions earlier, and um, I'm having some technical difficulties. I've also had some work-based technical difficulties. So you'll have to uh, forgive me if I'm just a touch more stuttery. I also forgot to grab a cup. So uh, thank you, um, whomever is watching. Uh, we've got one watch. Hit the like button. It's more scared of you than you are of it. Uh, this week, until and that bad joke was enough to, to knock them off. Wow. Okay. Um, this week, while I wait, I'm going to be doing a little bit of whittling. It'll probably be off camera, so we don't have a, a, a Zoom. But when it's, we get a couple people, you say hi. We're going to get right back into where we were last week. And as I recall, last week we briefly touched on fighting against um, spears, and we talked against staves. So we will probably be getting into uh, dealing with mass weapons as a light fighter fighting them. Because mass weapons uh, provide their whole own challenge. Um, I'm going to, as always, I'm going to be over here, uh, whew. I'm going to be, uh, basically telling, reminding folks I am live and we can go from, you know, go for there because I get this, you know, the, the messages as always. And we can go over um, what's going on. I'm really hoping to get uh, John Miner and uh, maybe Rex back. Love to keep the conversations going. We had a really good flow last week. And as much as I want to keep to, you know, obviously working through and plugging The Simple Sword by Nicholas Stalker, I, uh, <laughs> wow, I want, I'd rather have the good conversations than answer your questions. Now, I got a really good uh, comment about last week uh, about using uh, expired lipstick to mark your trainers to then mark where the cuts are. And while that would be messy, that is something we've talked about doing, especially with the more practical fighters. So I might want to get into doing that. And I'll bring this up later. We'll see who shows up as we rattle. We are actually at the 8 o'clock minute so we will see who comes in and uh we'll we'll go from there because I think this is this is a good format. Since I don't have anyone out here and I don't really care to whittle on that right now, I'll get into the book and we'll just talk about it. for the people following along in the simple sword. What I'm going to be talking about are agricultural weapons. What I have to say about them, which are, are useful to learn, what that, and one of my favorite types of swords. So, when we talk agricultural weapons, they break into two categories. And of course, my book closed because it's going to be ornery on me today. I can just tell I was all set up for another project and it didn't quite follow through. But agricultural weapons break down into mass weapons, which are things like hammers and axes. And, and there's a whole lot of variety off there. Mauls, which there are two types of maul that basically for our discussion, a splitting maul, which is a hello, my love. I'm so glad we are graced by the ever beautiful uh, Ren Contessa. And, uh, we're just going to be talking about the different weapons while well, people, unless you have something to discuss, you know, I am ever your servant. But 
for the folks who, who aren't, we're talking about uh, agricultural weapons. And maybe I need to step back because it's really interesting to see the types of things the peasantry and the uh, non-military populace have used in defense. And you have a split. You have a split between uh, what is rural defense, a oh boy, does my speech impediment love that word, and urban defense, even to this day. Things for urban defense were usually higher class, of course, more cost, usually. Anything ranging from a small concealable knife to a sap, which is a wonderful item, uh, also known as a blackjack, where it's just a little, little leather pouch full of rocks or coins or uh, what we'd consider BBs that you could smack small clubs and sticks. You never know. In certain circles, this is considered a formidable weapon if you know what you're doing with it. I call it a stick. But uh, while, we're, while we're going on about that, you have... And that evolves into uh, rapiers you ha as a sidearm, uh, small swords as a sidearm. A lot of what we discussed, you know, the main gouch, you always have to look at the carrying of a weapon. And even when we're talking about modern concealed carry, you have the same concepts. It's been going on for thousands of years to the point the, the Messer was developed in Germany as a way of getting around period weapon restrictions because they were considered knives, not swords. That's delightful. But right now, we've talked a lot about urban. I'm a big fan of uh, sword canes and different urban things. Let's talk about usually poorer individuals. They're going to be weaponizing the tools that they carry, and I am without a hair tie, and it's starting to drive me nuts. So, you know, all right. And guys, mash that like button because that's going to give uh, YouTube the uh, analytics and say hello because we've got a couple of viewers and I want to help. But what are we looking at? One of the most common uh, weapons based in agriculture is the axe. The axe is, is uh, ubiquitous. It's carried in, in a variant into battle even today. More as a... Uh, a tool of destruction than, an, you know, a breaching tool. But uh, it's also a wonderful tool for uh, running for, you know, mundane things. Technically, you can dig with an axe. You can uh, fall trees, make wood, you know, process it into fires. Axes are wonderful, wonderful things. Even something, you know, as tiny as this little guy, because it's the nearest axe in hand. I mean, everybody has axes next to their, their computer, right? Wow, I really need to, you know, I almost thought I need a throwing target in here, and I would get in trouble, and my wife would yell at me. Yeah, there, there was a disturbance outside, like she knows. It's kind of scary. But, awesome, awesome, awesome. Axes evolved. You take a, a wide blade falling axe, it's not, or a limbing axe, big wide blade, a broadhead axe, is not the most useful in combat. And one thing we get a big deviation between fantasy depiction and modern depiction, uh, historical depiction, not modern, is what a battle axe looks like. Because the vast majority of people, I talk about a battle axe, and I used to have head about this big. Dwarfs holding on to it. Uh, while they're great for uh, uh, you know, RPGs, those really aren't what battle axes look like. The head was actually much smaller, usually hooked. So you have a bearded axe, and again, none of the, them are up here, but you, know, you have something that's going to catch and go. I realized those are what I forgot when I came up. So... Axes provide the swordsman with uh, an interesting quandary. They're usually sh short-ranged in that, and I keep going to this because this is the one I have literally in reach, but they're not, even two-handed two limbing axes don't make really popular weapons. Usually they stretch the length to something, almost a walking stick with an axe head, and you start getting, that would be what a, a battle axe looks like. So 
Um, well, the best represent representations is the Cold Steel Axe Head uh, cane that I was supposed to have and the deal fell through. I really need to think about ordering another one just as a, as a neat walking tool because it's a relatively small head. It's hooked, and you can't, you can't talk about the importance of that hook enough because that's going to be what moves shields aside. That's going to let you grab and control opponents. It's very much a, a manipulator's item. And thank you for the like, folks. Uh, now, as they evolved, axes got progressively lighter to the point of the tomahawk. Now, I love tomahawks. They are one of my uh, semi-secret joys in that there are few things in, in life as nice as just throwing a decent tomahawk. And at this point, I want to talk. You will see two kinds of tomahawks sold at the low end. And let's be honest, most of the viewers here lean towards a uh, lower, uh, you know, they don't have a lot of money to put it. Bud K has a three pack that have an end cap, okay? The, the, the blade, the axe head sits as an end cap. Do not, under any circumstances, buy those. They will break on the first throw because they are pinned uh, at the head to hold it on. Now, the more expensive models are um, the, the blade is eye drop, is tear, okay? And it slides up the handle. It's not actually permanently affixed. This is on purpose so that if your handle breaks, you can very easily whittle down a log or a, a chunk of uh, tree limb to make a replacement. That's part of their charm in that they're very effective and they don't take a lot of metal materials. There's a trick to make making one that requires some forging work. You either have to, to meld it or you have to bloom it out. But it, they're still very simple, very quality. Fighting against an axe means the, the the opponent is going to be uh, much more aggressive short-ranged, unless they're planning to throw it, which I don't really like weapon, you know, fighting-based uh, throwing weapons, unless it's something like a javelin. Something like a javelin, a spear, these are meant to be thrown. They're not really good for uh, improvised. Throwing a knife, I'd rather just keep a hold of my knife, unless I have a lot of them. And then you're still giving a knife to the bad guys. That bothers me. You know, this guy again, thanks to Jim, is I need to make a trainer. Yes, actually, um, and welcome to the show, uh, Rex. As soon as it hops on. I don't know if I'm still feeding or not, because I just got a menu. Please wait while we're connecting. I don't know if you guys can hear me. If you can, please, uh, one of you. Uh, here we go. I think we're back. Sorry about that. They are redoing the internet for my entire town. Uh, most of the county is getting a new internet line and is just messing everything up. But yeah, for $70, you can get a Sog Tack Hawk. I have a similar model I actually got as a present for my wife, which is a sign that I married. Thank you that I married the right woman, but uh, those are great and they throw surprisingly well and they are nigh indestructible. I believe the best way to find out if something can break is to give it to, um, uh, oh, oh. oh. See, Al will always talk the Gucci grade of gear. And, and the downrange from Gerber, well, yeah, I'm, I'm actually a big Gerber fan. Uh, their, some of their low-end knives were my EDC for years till I found out it was a uh, felony in certain parts of Michigan at the time to have a, a assist open knife. That's what switched me to the CRKT. But, uh, yeah, I love axe throwing, and as soon as I find a way to either live stream it or the winds die down enough out here that I can set up a throwing range, maybe I'll do another throwing video. It's been quite some time since I've done that. If that's something people like, hit the comment. We'll see what we can work out. It is Memorial Day weekend, and you're supposed to play 
lawn games and throwing knives and axes. That's a normal lawn game, right? I mean, that's what people do, right? Anyway, but from a fencing standpoint, the danger of an axe is it's if it hits, it's going to hit hard. And most of them have enough of a hook, even the tomahawk. And here, behold my lovely graphics. <laughs> They can catch and deflect your blade, which makes them wonderful offhand or secondary tools. I love, I have a cold steel, I have several actually, cold steel trend chalk trainers. Catching a blade with it and just going. They all got left downstairs in the middle of the, the jumble because I knew I was forgetting something. But uh, catching it, getting the blade offline, tangling up, and then coming in with your other hand with perhaps another uh, type of agricultural weapon is one of my favorite things to do. See, not many people know this, but I do have a certain bucket list. And it's not necessarily places to go, although everybody has one of those. I want to forge a dusik. I want to forge a full-length dusik before I die. And I have most of the gear. I need to get some steel, and I need to at least make one. I've done some blades before that were... Uh, Again, uh, some of my moves have been less than pleasant, and there's been some flooding. So I, if I can't find it, it's written off. I hate to put it that way. But uh, I've done some stock reduction. I really want to forge myself a really pretty dusik. It's one of those, which sounds redundant because what is a dusik? A dusik is basically a period machete. Okay? It's a very simple to forge. It very, I believe personally, just from looking at it, that it uh, evolved from from uh, a shear, either a, sh a shear or a uh, a scythe. And it, what it is is a thick of machete where, where the tang curls goes through full tang, and instead of stopping, curls back around. And provides a type of handguard. It's a, it was a very popular model. It was very very popular in, at certain periods of what we now call Russia and uh, Poland. I believe was rather fond, if I remember right. Dusiks are great because they are definitely the sword of the most of the uh, the the plebeian, the most of the poor, the masses. These are things that were able to be made. And I adore that. The idea of a period machete weapon type weapon, that appeals to me. Another weapon that falls under this, and it's interesting because it gets mentioned in several uh, sword manuals, are sickles. Now, a sickle is a C-curved weapon. And again, I my trainer's not there. Uh, that is used for harvesting as a crescent-shaped blade Delightful, delightful tool. But uh, Meyer of all people, whoop, again, whoop, whoop, Meyer of all people, who has a really interesting uh, treatise on how one fences with them against each other. Against, they're, they're wonderful as a limb grab. They're wonderful as obviously severing because it's, the inside edge is curved. Is not curved. The inside edge is sharpened. I can speak today. Um, and they function again very much like like hawk is if you put them as an offhand tool. And what that is is yeah you can block with it to an extent, but you want to catch, care, hook, and then go. They're amazing. I might have to do a practical video. I am trying to find a device that will, YouTube will let me use in my garage so that I can do a, a video where I can get up and bounce around a bit more. Hopefully by next week as a reward for me going back to work, I, I will let myself do that because that's what you do. You give yourself extra work when you start going back to work. But uh, and I, please, I, I will always take comments, questions from the, the peanut gallery. I mentioned the psi. And psi's are really interesting because most people see, see a psi and they think this guy right here. They think the uh, the the Grim Reaper, and they they are neat, and there are manuals and depictions of fighting with them, 
the problem is that is, believe it or not, a very efficient design for what it's intended. It is essentially a mechanical lawnmower. The angles and weight are all distributed so that evenly with smooth strokes, you can cut off level large quantities of grain. Uh, the Amish still use them. A lot of reenactor, uh, reenactors, recreationists um, like to use them, but they were fought with. However, very rapidly they were discovered to not be the most efficient in combat. And while you can make them go, oh, oops, excuse me, and they are um, elegant when done right, you know, their systems, but frankly, there is, I believe there is no item that doesn't have an Eastern system somewhere tucked away that would work for its use. And if not, you, you know, I was challenged at one point here. Bonk, I want a buffer like this. How do I make it go? And we went over it and, and it worked. And then a couple years later, I got to see the uh, somebody else's idea of how to do it come up in a video game. And that was really cool because uh, the bladed hula hoop as a concept is terrifying and interesting, and I enjoy it immensely. Not that I uh, would fight it, but I'll fight, you know me, I'll play it any style just to see if we can make it go. And uh, when, you're, when you're fighting against a Psy, that's tiring. It's a great weapon that's poorly balanced. That means get them to overcommit, come in behind. That's going to be a lot of the key to fighting any mass-based weapon, any large weapon, e even some rapiers, if they're heavy enough and you can see that they're a little unwieldy, you want to bait the uh, the opponent into overacting and then come in quickly behind their attack. This is why timing is as important as range. And timing is very difficult to teach in a... Uh, in a static format like a book. It's very, very hard to talk about the concept of timing in a fight. And uh, uh, go. Whew. Giganti covers it well. Uh, anybody who's, who's heard the phrase one tempo understands just how difficult it is to pace that. Now, Rex, for example, is a uh, Olympic fencer, Olympic style, Olympic style. He's not quite to the Olympics yet, but I have hopes and I still believe in him. That being said, the beat and counter beat in that style, especially as right of way is something that's understood as a necessity. It makes the tempo very, uh, you can dance to it. Um, and that's where you start to really understand that music, dance, and swordplay are all far more interwoven than anybody wants to discuss. So if you the more, and it's funny, the more brutal the weapon, the more uh, delicate the response. You know what I said? Uh, ow. You have a sh if you if you, if if you get a chance, man, I want I would still love to see you go all the way. One of my favorite oh god, there's a gentleman and I cannot remember his name, but I fought him in the SCA and he was heck on wheels. And that was back when I was fast, and that's how I knew I was fast because he told me you're fast, and I'm like, well, thank you, you know, my lord. What you know, I'm I'm just trying. He goes no, fast. That's when I knew I I need to codify my system. It's one of the highest compliments I've ever received. I'm just really terrible with at normal names, and SCA names were worse. But I believe Al could do it. He's good, and he's motivated. So, and that's one thing. I, I got flack from somebody because they were coming by my practice, and they're like, your students don't fight alike, Nick. I'm like, yes, they do. No, no, they don't. They fight different weapons. They fit, fight different styles. Their footwork's all different. I'm like, no, 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 no. No. That's because there are two ways to approach teaching, okay? on, on With a sword, 
Silly made. You know what? Silly made up names and silly made up games. Oh well, we'll we'll see if I'm still here or not. But boob, boob, boob. Um, yeah, I, I have this reconnecting thing going. Okay, I know I'm back again. But yeah, silly. No, that's not. I want people to have fun. I respect the game. I respect the dream. I just woke up. But that all being said, when you when you have two styles, you have the there. Um, I call it the Joe style. There was a guy named Joe or Jerome, whatever, and he believed that. Uh, I think it's Guy Windsor's uh, Swordsman's Companion. Fine book. Don't get me wrong but was the absolute Bible for how to sword fight. Um, the, it was the only way. This system is the correct system. No. And it's not that there's anything wrong with that system. I, I like this, the, the book, but you have to find weapons and a style that fit you. And this is where we get to the second style, which is what I believe. I believe in giving people a basis, and a Rosetta Stone. So the style I teach is, is the basics as I understand them, and it's made by looking at the basics of a bunch of bunch of styles. They all agree on 80% of stuff, so I'm going to focus on the 80% of stuff that most sword masters agree on, whatever genre, okay? And that's what I think everybody should learn first, and then they find what works for them. The concept is finding your fight. Now, to find your fight, one, you have to be exposed to different styles, and you have to try them. One of the greatest joys for me as an instructor, when I've got somebody past uh, what I consider the uh, initial training, and the initial training is you're going to get a sword. We're, we're going to work with a fixed length of sword, roughly 36 inches of blade between 30 and 36 inches of blade, I'm going to measure it out on you, and you're going to train with that. You're going to train with that till you know your reach with that, till you know how you move, how uh, how the style that you are, want to do works. Are you aggressive? Are you, how much two-handedness are you comfortable with? Do you find yourself wanting to grab that and you know go two-handed? Do you find yourself wanting two weapons? Do you want a shield? What do you want? And once we find that, folks, then I get the day where it's like, okay, I have trainers. I realize some people collect live steel, and I have a a, a, a small token uh, collection of, of live steel that I love and I respect. And there are a few weapons that I would like. Obviously, it's, it's live steel. But at the end of the day, I find myself drawn to buying more trainers because trainers are what's going to get used. That's what's going to get used by uh, the people I know. And I want them to have that option. I want... Oh, pardon. I was up till four last night. Formatting it because we, we had some formatting things. So I'm that, you know, that's me paying the bills and doing another one of my passion projects. But uh, when they get to the... Here's all the toys. Tell me what feels right. There's here's an open list field. You can try to fight in it. You know, swing it around, see how it moves. You're not going to hit anything. If you want, I can oppose you in any style I have. I'm not the best at any of the styles, but I can make all of them go. I am a generalist, and I'm okay with that. I th I think there are two ways to build up any any art. You can take and reach, like, and let's be honest, Al is is pursuing a dream of being an Olympian. Even if he doesn't get there, through his own actions, he's worked to try to push the peak of, of the modern take on sword, sword fighting to its, to its height. He's chasing that height. And I respect and I love that. And uh, there was time in my life where I chased that in my own way a little bit and uh, well for whatever reason I was weighed measured and found lacking I came in second a lot 
almost, you know, ridiculous numbers of tourney, I came in second. And that's how it worked out. I'm okay with that. But I have yet to find somebody who can teach so many so quickly, and that's where my strength is. So while Al tries to raise the pyramid by raising the, the roof, I try to build the base of it just a little bit better, a little bit higher. And that's that's kind of how one one approaches. But uh, oh, I didn't show. I'm sorry, I didn't show you the picture of the Dosik. This is Dosik and a and a, a, re, a fairly accurate picture of the leather trainers they've used. I actually, my good friend Ryan Coker, um, also known here as Off in the Woods, brought out a uh, gorgeous leather Dosik trainers. And the neat things about the thick leather ones is they bite the way uh, the way steel has, even if it doesn't ding. It's hard to explain, but the tacto, the sensitivity, has an adhesion. So when when uh, bl when two blades meet, there's a resistance, and that's the one major flaw I find in plastic trainers. Sorry, I got a ping on my alternate. Uh, oh. Okay, um, please support the, uh, the memory of the fallen this weekend. Sorry, that just, something came through and I, I'm knocking a frog in my throat. I am not going to do it, uh, but we, uh, I'm sorry, that just, that's the problem with ha having people who know, know your soft spots. We, uh, I still put, bring it to the front. Okay, cool. Dosix, the trainers bind and there's a, uh, adhesion. And you can feel it with a training steel weapon, like a foil saber or epe. Uh, you can certainly feel it with a uh, rapier. You know, a wide training rapier blade or a schlager. I'm still a schlager guy. I think that a bit of my German comes out. I, uh, but we... Uh, plastic doesn't have that. So... Perry slide more, and that, that's just, it's just a hazard. And I was really surprised we brought those out because the leather gripped, and it felt much more oddly like steel than the plastic did. So if you get a chance to try them, really try them, it's a very, 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 very ancient design of trainer, and they are rather expensive, but they, they are a lot of fun. So um, I've talked to, fight, okay. Fighting against a Dossack. A Dossack has limited handguard by, by its nature. Therefore, you can snipe the hand and forearm fairly easily. It literally is essentially a period machete with a knuckle guard. It's a nice weapon, but it's going to be short, so range is limited. It forces aggression. It's slightly curved, so it's not going to be that comfortable in a, in a thrust compared to uh, just how, how much of a slashing weapon it's going to be which means it's going to telegraph your attacks just a bit more. A thrust is always more subtle as an attack. It's very hard to get a cut in. Now, we can talk about draw cuts and uh, the fact that against unarmored targets, slashing weapons may be more effective in wide tip than straight cuttings, just on the edge. Now, piercing, piercing weapons for days, if you can... It may not stop them right away, but it's more likely to kill them. And I, we start running into the parallel of the ammunition that that uh, mushrooms and impacts versus am ammunition that blows through. You know, you get that in uh, weaponry, believe it or not, to even to the point where. Uh, I last week I was talking a little bit about karambit and self defense with the karambit. Uh, we, uh, I'm sorry, we're checking. 
Yes, I'm live. Okay. Uh, but uh, with the karambit, the blunted training karambit that's a hard trainer Hey, you know what? Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I I think my, I, I needed to hear that. Um, it was just one of those I kept. You you can ask Amanda. I, I'd only get to fight a few a year, and I would always, always just hit that line. And, you know, I'd be... There'd be my peers, and there'd always be that one guy who just showed up last minute. And I'd, most of the time, there's no... I don't mind being beaten by somebody superior to me. Shocking. A guy on YouTube says there are better fighters than me. Because there are. I know that's true. You know it's true. But there were a few that did that uh, did that by what I would consider less than honorable means. And Rex will pipe right in with this is why all sort of styles should have electronic st scoring. Yeah, and yeah, there is always someone better. But to my credit, I in a fifteen and verse fifteen, I think it was fifteen verse fifteen melee. I was the last man standing, and a lot of them were my better in a fair tournament style fight. But it was a melee, so it was more dynamic. Use electric electric scoring. You know, when they make wireless electric scoring, I think it's going to get a lot more valid. I, you know, I don't see, I would like to see uh, uh, the technology for wireless electric scoring. Because then you're not trapped on the line. Then you can have more fighting in the round. I know uh, whatever that was with the fancy Lorica electronic suits. There was a league that came out for a while, and I lusted after their gear. Leon, well, of course, Leon, you could get enough to put a down payment on a Leon Paul sword. Uh, <laughs> my Stark is strong tonight, but uh, yes, okay. Uh, we are. Uh, no, sorry. Whew. I can never do a video without having my drink handy because I'm not going to have a voice or squat tomorrow. It, it's only... I will say this. I saw a, a regular scoring box on eBay running around 120 bucks for, for a very low-end uh, scoring device. Funds. That's why I didn't buy the really sexy uh, electric daggers that I really kind of was tempted because I think that would be fun too. But, uh, you know, Dr. Al, may the force be with you on that one. You know, maybe you could set up your own uh, gym after this is all said and done. Frankly, I'd love to see it. Um, sorry, I'm a little distracted tonight. I'm just a little off the wall. That would be incredible. I would love to see you do that out. I think that would be a great way for you to give back to the art. And yes. So I don't know if up how you're watching, but our good friend Al's talking about getting his uh, ref qualification. I would love to see it. If my net is bugging, I'm sorry. Um, I, I know that... Uh, Ren would be suited to, to the foil, I think. Possibly even the saber. Might surprise a lot of people. I, I would, We were talking at one point, and a very light, very uh, balanced weapon would do you real well. And that would be kind of neat. And, you know, that would kind of take me back. Yes, uh, my net is terrible. I'm very, very sorry. I, I've gotten to see how bad some of these videos have come through. They're redoing the uh, internet, have been for a couple of weeks now in my community. And there's another company coming through. I will be just 
paying more money and getting a landline because this setup is ridiculous. It's I, I thank everyone for their patience. Um, let me see. I yes, people must not be showing. YouTube doesn't always show that people are here, so I have to uh, I have to check these things. But uh, who this is this is fun. Okay, um, we have a this is a really kind of low week this week. I need I need to send the messages out more often. We uh, next week. Next week, if all goes well, if I can, I will broadcast from the garage. And if I can broadcast from the garage, I can uh, show off my weapons better. I can demonstrate a bit. I can get some distance because I only have this far before I run into the tarp of secrecy that keeps me from getting uh, uh, dinged by YouTube for copyright violations. At one point, a picture of my own family they tried to ding me for copyright violations, so I have to be very careful. Coco Garage, yes, and then I'll be able to. You, it'll be sort of a, a plug and play. You guys can say, "Hey, I want to see what this weapon moves like," or maybe we could get a little more in depth. How do you deal with this? I really would love to be able to have a, a, a second, you know, fight this guy. I did, and I have won those, and my videos went back up. But uh, what is going on? Okay. That's what that is. But uh, we might have some more people coming in later. We'll, we'll do, I'll try to hold the line as long as I can. But uh, I know some people would like to see more knife review tra knife trainers reviewed, and I have a stupid quantity downstairs. Um, but you know this this channel, especially this this show, this format is meant to be a conversation. So I'm all about uh, making people happy. Or well, my buddy Steve isn't on. But I want him to know that the Hello Karambit has appeared solely to uh, pester Steve. So, woohoo! Anyhow, funny, that thing's never given me any trouble. That's odd. Oh, well, I'm okay with that too. Um, I think the problem, one of the problems people have is because I keep getting the same kind what's the best? What's the best knife? We talked about that last last time. What's the the best sword? Okay, Steve is at work. So everybody who knows Steve, be sure to you know what? Um like screenshot this and uh send it to him. The people who are friends with him on Facebook because I think He's had a rough time. He actually was in a bad car wreck. And while he's okay, it affected his mood. It, 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 obviously, it was it, it's a rough thing. He is physically okay. But, you know, you don't go through that and not come out with some crankiness. So the best way to cheer him up is to make fun of him. Because, you know, that's what, what friends do for friends. At least so I've been told. Now, if we... Uh, if we wanted to talk, we, we, we need to talk more about uh, practicality, maybe. I, I got some comments, where do I start? If you need to start and you've never handled the sword before, obviously I'm going to recommend my book. It would be so, you know, it would be cutting my own wrist to not recommend my book. And I believe it's a high quality item. But, uh Pick a style that has meaning to you, folks, and pick one that um, you can actually try to train in. There is a lot of gear at, as you pick move into a group. But from the base level, when you're like, how do I make a sword go? Um, you can, like, it, for the case of somebody interested in uh, classical fencing, 
there are clubs, there are schools, there are organizations that can help you. Uh, getting your own gear, the mask can be kind of stiff, but especially if you're just looking for a, a practice non-electric version, you can get a, a non-electric foil for like 25 bucks. Oh, you know, so don't let that run you off. If you want a more concussive style, there are book packs, there are DVD packs, but sh round. Because uh, one, your library can order a lot of these things for, for you. I actually got uh, Dr. Yang Dwingnings, pardon my, my uh, speech impediment and my throat acting up, but uh, I got his, uh, got to watch his wonderful video on the, you want a, a nice intro to uh, Eastern sword styles, especially straight sword, that is where to go. I'll be the first to say it. It's a fascinating book. But, uh, and uh, DVD series, basically he has a whole sc literal school built. Anyhow. Uh, so you got pick and then, you, then pursue it. Take us, what is the best sword? What is the best sword? Uh, the best sword is the one you can reach and the one you can make go. A lot of people will say the long sword is the best sword to give reasons, or the saber is the best sword. The foil is the best sword. It depends. It depends what you, uh, what you, uh, are looking to accomplish. So uh, don't be afraid. Don't 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 be afraid to study. Don't be afraid to try. Um, just make sure if you know you're going to work within a group, find out their conventions. That word was eluding me. Conventions are the rules of play. Now, for for me in the guild, our conventions are very fluid. I usually require face protection, groin protection, and. Uh, Yo, know, long sleeves, some kind of padding if possible, depending on the style. Now, if I know we're fe fencing foils, guys, suit up. If I know we're fighting um, heavy rapiers, I want that rapier jacket for a reason. I'm going to say put a plastron under there. If you're running uh, the synthetics, it's whatever you have, the uh, what fits the way we're fighting. So we, you know, that's all fluid. Amp guard is very specific about how their uh, buffers are made. A uh, dago here is very specific, and there's some gorgeous. They're actually like fencing buffers that exist. Okay, in uh, like hot, not just homemade, which I I know how to do. I just haven't lately. Uh, but high end, uh, like the latex foam rapiers and small swords that are handle like a weapon instead of just a foam pool noodle whiffling through the air. They make this, that aspect of the game possibly more interesting. But honestly, in my old age, I usually keep personally my role playing separate from my fighting because on the field, there's nobody I'd rather be than me, which it sounds kind of pompous, I suppose, but I, you know, sword wise, I like who I am. I like how I fight, and I like what I do. But uh, but uh, I needed to to come on something. We uh, we're gonna find out, and you're gonna find out that. The style has to uh, it has to progress, and we need we need the style to progress. Okay, it, it's okay. Fantasy Rex is just Rex, even more charismatic. So I get it. Uh, my internet is unstable again, and again I can't tell if I'm on. But Rex, yes, yes, Rex. 
Fantasy Rex is better than you. And I don't mean that to Rex. I mean that to just about everybody. I, I mean, he has the capacity, because I get this big warning message that says, your neck is unstable. Well, I'm unstable, so that doesn't really help. It also looks like my background keeps oddly changing shade and color. And that's kind of interesting. I haven't quite figured out why that's going on. I might have a new background coming that's less uh, uh, criminal minds. But more, you know, I don't know, stylish. We'll figure it out. But we need, uh, uh, we need our styles to match. And... In the fantasy realm, who would I want to be? I mean, I'm literally a sword master. I've literally trained over 100 people over the years, but more than that. I don't know how many I've trained at this point. You know, I've fought with more styles than I could pronounce, let alone name at any given point. And I've probably forgot more about a lot of sword fighting than most people ever hear. That's arrogant sounding, but it's also true. I can hold my own. And given my situation, that's not bad. <laughs> Between uh, between my traits and uh, my, uh, like I said, my situation, that I can hold my own against who I do is a matter of pride. I am not arrogant enough to think I'm going to go in winning every bout. And I think you should start there, too. Just get get good. Um, so I'm going to pull back because I'm getting a bit of conversation. Be proud. Thank you. I've had to earn them. Uh, Oh, let's let's take a minute. Let's step back from weapon styles because I'm still per going through the group. And I, what I'm doing in the next part of the book is talking about melee and group tactics. And that's really... <laughs> oh, you have to be arrogant that you can always win. It's always a possibility... You know, don't self-defeat. But, I'll, again, at the level I'm at, man, a lot of what I find, I, I think I could phrase this, is what are your victory conditions? And work toward that. And that was part of what, what held me up, I found out. Because I knew if I was in a bad mood, and I was willing to take it that extra notch, both of aggression and style, I could beat more people than perhaps I would normally. And I even even people who had fought me a long time found out I have multiple notches. It, the problem, and I, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear it. The people have, um, well, a simulated altercation. Okay, so, so a fencing duel, a sparring session. I always find that there's, I never feel like I can jump to that 100% because my mind just isn't in that place of I'm a kill him, you know? Even I've spent part of my field, most people know, I worked with severely mentally and physically handicapped special needs who had uh, behavioral problems. Many of them would elicit violence. So I learned systems of defense that were very limited in, in damage and response, very minimalistic. And that has shaped a lot of my approach to uh, unhand, you know, unarmed combat. I don't want to hurt anybody. You know, part of it is moral. Part of it is actually faith-based in that I don't, you know, I, I want to treat people like I would be treated. And so it, it's almost hard to hit that next competitive jump. And I could, but I also realized after I was done, I didn't have fun. It felt like a real threat. My mind treated it like a real threat. I was very, very effective, but I didn't have fun at the end because I'd spent the whole night thinking, I'm, I'm, you know, that's, they're, they're going to hurt me. I'm going to get them. And no, no calibration issues, no physical damage. But the mentality, the uh, the killer mentality, if you will, is not something that I find comfortable. It's there, and it can be manifested. Um, but you know, I'd love to hear people's take on that. You know, especially people who've experienced with violence, 
because violence is t- tied into what we do. And I think it needs it, it needs to be looked at from all angles because people ask about that. You know, I've, I've had people, hey, you know how to make a, make these things. You're a knife guy. I'm like, I, you know, I like I like knives. I can make them go. I don't count myself a knife guy because I've met knife guys where it's like this is a X hardened block. You know, com, you know, they're very specific, and I'm very specific in function. I'm not going to quibble over a few points of steel hardness. I think that's a level of refinement. It's a tool. And to me, to the level, even the sword is a tool. It may be a tool for applied violence. That's fine. Uh, uh, you know, the running joke, a rapier is called such because it is a tool of non-consensual penetration. That's, you know, origin. <laughs> uh but there is a level, I think, when people take it so far because they want to be cool. And at the end of the day, you know, a knife is a hardened piece of usually steel that is used to do a job. And it's not that I uh, don't see the mythos or the mystique, because I've forged knives. I've been around, you know, masterful forgers, you know. Uh, blacksmiths and things, sorry. Been around masterful masterful forgers too, but that's a whole different art. Uh your 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 bladesmiths. I've sat and I've watched. And if you have somebody who's truly good at what they're doing, you will learn from simple observation. And that should be, in my opinion, a teacher's goal should always be of a level to first be able to demonstrate in such a way that they learn, even if it's unintended. And second, eventually be able to teach the eye of the student to recognize the lessons being given to them. This is a little off topic, but it gets into what we're talking about because when you get into uh, going from, okay, I've been training myself. I like this style. Maybe you've got a few years under my belt. How am I going to train it, train someone else? And how how is that going to uh, how am I going to codify? How do I get them oh God, this is to, to see how do I get them to see what I can see? How can you get them to look at something and go their footwork's wrong, they're gonna trip. That's that's when the Secret Service stops by, Nick. Oh, sorry. I didn't think about what comment you were talking about because my net forged... My, my net glitched. Yes. No, I do not forge things in that art. But being an artist, I both know people who have, and I have turned down propositions. Um... But uh, a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away where even the statute of limitations is over. Uh, <laughs> that being said, no, no. Do not forge things. Do not fake and falsely duplicate things. That's bad. Blacksmith things. Bladesmith things. Go out somewhere safe, heat up metal, hit it with a hammer, and learn what it does. I've, I've blacksmithed. Uh, at a campfire, and it was one of the better experiences I had. I know I'm getting more viewers because my net's being dodgy, and even though they're not showing up, it always does before somebody comments. So I'm hoping that, that you know we're getting through to more people. Uh, a lot of people... Uh, but, so, going back, I'm sorry. I'm really scatterbrained tonight. I'm not really on the, on the ball, and I'm sorry for that. When you are uh, when you are taking the step of learning to fight, learning to teach to fight versus learning to fight, the first thing you got to do is go all the way back and try to look at the four, you know, the basic of basic lessons from the perspective of the experienced eye, how you learned it, what could be improved or changed in your opinion to make it better. 
But uh, and through that, you can uh, you. That's how you start to develop your take. And I'm gonna skip the melee tactic stuff. Because I have some games we play in the guild. We're going to get to teaching students. Cool. So, when you're looking after that, that's your development, okay? If you want to teach somebody, don't worry about them. Uh, teach them. Can't teach somebody to dance before they learn to walk. Can't teach them to walk before they learn to stand. It's like, oh, that's a... No, 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 really. Every step has to build on itself. One of the things I ran into the most was when I was teaching someone. Someone else would come in, oh, I can show you an advanced move. And if you show somebody who hasn't learned the basics fully an advanced move, what I mean, rapier, rapier. If I teach somebody, let me see, I need something short that'll fit. Boop. I'm teaching them the four basic, you know, one, two, three, four, linear guards, and how to thrust from these positions. We haven't even gotten to offline stuff, you know. It's hard because my defensive diamond here is actually larger than uh, the space I have to work with. But if you teach somebody to do, like, a flip shot, and a flip shot, shot, as defined by yours truly, is is a cavazione mid a thrust, which means I have targeted an area. I'm obviously going there, and as I throw the thrust, I rotate my wrist and I bring the tip to a different target, often bypassing a weapon as it comes in. This is a great thing, but if you teach it to somebody who hasn't learned a straight thrust yet, they're going to do that every single time. It's going to take its value as a technique away from them because that's all they're doing. There are lessons that need to be taught and a sequence they need to be taught in. So when you're teaching somebody and when you're learning, think in terms of building that tower. That's what's going to help make you a better fighter. At any time you find yourself having trouble up here, it's just like math. You go down a notch. If you're getting skewered on your, uh, after a lunge, something's wrong with your footwork. Or there's something wrong with your defense. You might have a blind spot. Heck, it might be, I, I've had people where their gear was fine unless they lunge because the combination of rolling the shoulder would bump the gorget, shoot the hood up, and make a blind spot right here. And I'm going to tell you, when you fight the same people, the Frequently, when you have a group you're in, they will find your weakness and they will capitalize on it all the time. <coughs> that's you know that's one of those that's that's why it's important to rotate around, train with other groups, train with other disciplines, and it's why it's important to uh, to really pay attention and communicate in your group. Now, if you're fighting it with a group, you know, like the guild, the guild is not about an individual winning, okay? If you win, cool. That's And we'll do tourneys. Uh, we usually do at least once a year a nice tourney. I crank out some kind of uh, goofy-looking trophy, and uh, everybody who can make it dukes it out. Last person standing gets a trophy. It's a good time. Uh I obviously don't participate in that particular thing because somebody has to ref. But uh, if you you are um, if you're you're learning and you're in, you got to communicate and it I my rule as a sword master, especially when I'm sparring with a, an intermediate student, somebody who knows what they're doing. Because I basically give a newbie, well, give an untrained, give somebody who's barely held the sword. They're the most dangerous because they could do literally anything, and you don't know where it's going to come from. There's a period where they become a newbie where they're actually a bit safer 
because they've warped it in and they're trying to approximate what you're teaching. And then there's an intermit where they're finding out how it works in their style, what moves, what gets in, what doesn't. So at that point, if I, when I'm fencing somebody, if I, in a, in a row, kill them three times, boom, 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 I'm stopping what I'm doing. I'm going, this is how I'm killing you. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do this in the next exchange. What do I mean by an exchange? We square off. About is the whole, about is the whole encounter in, in almost D&D &D terms. An exchange or a pass is I'm doing something and you're doing something and whatever happens until we kind of reset for a second is the exchange. So if I'm doing the same thing, it's like fake them low, shoot high, kill them. I'm going to tell you how I did that. And that's going to make you a better fighter faster. There are a lot of people who believe in the uh, hammer school of education. If you don't block something, I'm going to hit you there. Bam. And I'm going to hit you there every single time. But uh, you need to, you know, bam, bam, bam. And the goal by that attitude is figure it out, figure it out, figure it out, figure it out. I hate, oh, I don't use that word lightly, I hate that approach. Because you won't figure it out. Vast majority of time, if something is getting hammered, you're going to get frustrated. And unless you can look at a video of it, have somebody else tell you what's going on, you're going to just get mad. If you are teaching, go slow, be repetitive. And if they make a mistake more than three times, I obviously, <clears throat> you know, you want a good bout and... You don't want to fight them full force, obviously. There's very little to, to be learned that way. You want to build up your difficulty to match what they need. Um, so do so and let them know what they're doing. And that's why originally I started taping these bouts. That's why if you go, you'll see... All these videos, date, name, weapon type. Uh, Nick versus Jim, dueling Dussex. 82881. Okay, not that date, obviously. Uh, 82818, sorry. That's dyslexia. It just hit my picture. But uh, if you're going to do that, it's totally and completely. Are to it's totally and completely worth it. So what you need to do is take that step and build them up. It can't ever be about your ego. The the refinement I do. Oh, thank you. The the refinement I do. I have one goal when I train somebody. Well, two. First, that they're safe. Got to be safe. Relative, I know. Uh, martial arts are dangerous. These are weapons for crime's sake. But uh, they uh, they will. Uh, the next thing is beat me. You're, you're you're the instructor. You're the sword master. You're the guild master of the entire organization. Yep. Your goal is to be able to beat me fairly consistently. You shouldn't beat me every time, because then it's a failing on my part, but you still might. Why? Why, you say? Well, if we have equivalent knowledge of a style, I am short, overweight, physically handicapped. Almost blind as a bat sometimes. You should be able to beat me. Most of my students are rather a bit younger than me. They should have every tool to at least consistently defeat me in combat. But respect my vision enough for me to be able to stop about and say, okay, you are fighting you. You're going faster or maybe you're taller, so I can't demonstrate the exact angle.
but this is what's happening. And once we get that respect, I go less from an instructor role to a peer coach kind of role. And there's a, there's a big difference because I will be a bit persnickety. Your, your blades are not level. Your thrust is not straight. Fine. But when it gets to the important things in life, it needs to be your expression of them. So if you look, the way, say, Jim moves, the way Trelana moves is radically different than the way I move. And part of it is everybody's different from the way I move. But there's, all a, there's always a consistency. And that's what you want to read as a trainer. And part of, there are a whole lot of manuals. How to be a better swordsman. How to be a better fencer. How to move forward. There aren't a lot of how to be the next step as a trainer. There are aspects you'll find it in, in Gigante has some aspects. Uh, Silver, of course, has opinions on the issue. Silver has opinions on just about every issue. And it usually starts with those barbaric Spaniards. But, and that's Silver. I love the Spanish. And I love the Spanish fighting schools and weapons. So, yeah. But. To do the next steps, you have to build, you have to pull your ego out. And sometimes it's hard. And once in a blue moon, you have to bring it back. What do I mean? There are going to be problems, students. Especially in something as voluntary as I do it. And there, you will get people who flat out lie to you. Wow, Billy B.A. And <laughs> farewell, latitude, you poor Spanish ladies. Now you're, oh, dang it, Al's, Al got me to sing on camera. Dang it, Al. Dang it. Now, what, that is going to be stuck in my head. And I swear that song has so much historical association with rum that you can get a hangover from just singing it and I don't even drink but uh wow sorry I was at an event walking back to a campfire with a couple very intoxicated folks all singing that song rather uh loudly rather enthusiastically and there were some creative lyrics oh my gosh go oh. who that's funny when you can smell the campfire smoke that well done but uh my point being as a teacher you always want to try to be roughly when you're training presenting material at a level of your opponent of your opponent slash student. That means sl slowing down your motion. That means being Jack Benny. Okay. Jack Benny was an entertainer and an incredibly talented uh, violinist. But whenever he was on a show, he would play his violin really really badly, like painfully. And somebody commented that you have to be a true master of an instrument to be able to play it that badly at will. You know, you have, you have enough, con you teach yourself to do it right, but have a role to intentionally do it wrong. That takes talent. And that's why uh, trainers are rare. Because if I'm doing it right, they're beating me at each level, a whole lot. I am the opposite end of a RPG grind, essentially. So I have to, and a, as they get better, I have to, I level up my response till it gets to the point where we're having real tourneys and we're duking it out, and it's fun. And that's that's how the arc should be. Now, occasionally you'll have somebody who pretends that they know more than they do. Or um, personal beef, uh, the concept of children 
getting martial arts awards as children of certain ranks. Yeah. Like, uh, if, if a kid, I, you know, I, I remember hearing martial artists talk and I, I associate with them because I do open hand stuff, but it's even more informal than my current, you know, sword style. So I get to play, pat, you know, I tell people I play patty cake with folks. I play patty cake with, uh, used to do Tai Chi slow hands with John Minor, used to do all sorts of crazy stuff with uh, Sword Sage uh, Marco. I, and I'll, I'll be honest, I would love, I miss the days when he was doing Wing Chun and we'd play. We'd just pop, 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 pop. And then I did a few years of, uh, well, CPI, Crisis uh, Prevention and Intervention, where, uh, the medical holds and stuff became almost like more than, than than second nature. They were first nature to the point where I had to catch myself because I'd be fencing one hand and parry off. And I'll, I'll, I find myself wanting to go for the arm lock, you know, <laughs> but uh, I don't think awards should be given. They should be. Hey, you know what? Ba basket holds for days. Um, I will say there's a variant of the two-man uh, therapeutic hold that can be done one-handed that will keep you alive and disarm somebody pretty effectively if motivated. But yeah, hug foo. And it, what the, the terrible part of that, uh, he's referencing it, what's called the basket hold, where you reach around and have their their wrist, the wrists of the. Uh, now this is a person who's trying, through emotional un un understanding, to harm you, sometimes with a weapon, and you end up with their wrist there in a hole, they're hold, held back this way. No joint is being forced, and they're leaned back to offset the balance. Uh, exactly. But uh. Yeah, I did a lot of that at my previous employment, and a lot of that's still there. A lot of the uh, the little shin block things still pop up. That I mean, that no, you're not hitting me. Go sit down. Was just it, it became. I was doing 120 hour work weeks, and I was having five or six. Uh, behaviors that I was dealing with, violent behaviors at times, a shift. So that was a lot of hand-on-hand -hand dealing with people. Uh, no, I do not still do DSP work right... Well, let me amend that. I stopped doing DSP work to uh, care for Xander because at the time there was, there was a lot of skill overlap. And I still... Occasionally, I'm kept sharp doing that, but I'm not professionally doing that. Right now, professionally, I am a librarian. I am also uh, the contracted designer of uh, the hybrids, the Sons of Gods RPG, and then freelance author, game designer, and uh, swordmaster through this. That's what I'm doing monetarily. Uh I may be getting a hold of you in the near future, actually, because I'm going to be looking for playtesters, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but, yeah. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm actually I'm actually going back to work Friday at the library. Um, my, my furlough is pretty much uncomfortable, but... Um, it's better for my health because of some stuff that kicked up that I don't work in a medical field. It just, I've got some, some stuff to work through and always good. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> but I also don't believe in like hiding it. Like I'm ashamed of my situation. No, I, I walk with a cane proudly when I need to walk with a cane because I'm not in the wheelchair. If I ever need a wheelchair, I'll roll proudly because at least I'm not sitting on the couch not doing anything, you know? That's my my scope. And uh, 
you know, you know me, I be believe in through honesty and work building people up. I am much, much harder on myself for that. And we just, we see how it goes, but, uh, yeah, we <clears throat> training. So I got just, dis yeah, distracted. Boy, I'm going to drink about six gallons of Mio when I'm off. Um, uh, Thank you. I, I try. I, that's all I want to do is like make th make things a little better. I don't expect wealth. I've never really pursued it. I don't expect fame. Honestly, I'd be uncomfortable with it. But I do. I, I do want. I the messages I carry. I think are more important than the messenger. And if I can get them spread to charismatic charismatic people like you. And uh, like the lovely uh, Ren Contessa and a few others who can take it in different areas, we can, uh, we can, the signal can carry out and people may get the idea that, hey, you know, building each other up builds the, uh, builds things. There's a publisher, his name's Brian K. Morris. He runs Rising Tide Publications, F born from the phrase, a rising tide lifts all boats or lifts all uh, he's really big into building. You're looking to publish or you're looking to buy some really great, like, pulp writing, go there. He didn't pay me for any of this. You know, no, the, uh, my sponsors are my patrons. And that right now is the, the amazing Steve Augusto and the ever effervescent uh, Ren Contessa. If you wish to financially support me in any way, shape, or form, please consider. Um, I have the link to my uh, Patreon, it will be in the Gobbly Gook. Just look up the Historical Fencing Guild on uh, on Patreon, and anything anybody wants to give is always welcome. I'm about I was about due for that that plug anyway, but uh, yeah, yeah. I will tell you, it is something to do, and I think that's why I liked CPI so much because it it, it well, it's not perfect, but it gave me a way to uh, to do that on that front. But anyway. I, I encourage everyone who loves an art of any sort, be it drawing, sword mastery, martial arts, to learn it enough to teach it and then teach it. If you have found a development in your own style, write that bare minimum. We have an obligation to our future to write our, write that down. You know, um, I've been bugging Sword Sage for years to write a manual of his style because I've watched him go through a lot of development and he's teaching his son, and that should be something written down. Um, John Minor, he's done a lot of things. I would love to see him write an I don't know if it would be classified, but I'd love to see it. I I encourage this. I encourage uh, you guys to give back to the fields that give to you, because one, it's just karmically smart, and two, it, uh, it builds everybody up. And yeah, that mean, th there's a hazard there. There are people who, gonna, who will come up to you and go, you're wrong. And you go, you know, that's your opinion. If it's something I can learn from, I'll learn from it. My opinion changes with the uh, application of provable facts. I know I make mistakes, but, you know, if it's civil, I will try to amend them. That is kind of necessary and very rare. We need to encourage that. But, um, a lot of people tell me that getting started is um, expensive, and it really does. When you're taking the next level to train, um, it shouldn't be that expensive. In that, I find most people who do a Western martial art end up with at least two sets a year. In that, they have what they improvise as a starter. And it doubles as their fallback if something breaks. And then their primary. Sometimes they have three sets of gear. Well, that could let you outfit two to three, you know, two to three people. And yeah, it puts wear and tear on your gear. And that's how you end up in my situation where I've got had a lot of loner gear. And I finally have to re-amend my own gear, which is kind of troublesome. But it lets you have that. I've put out out ways to make very simple low-cost trainers several times. I mentioned them in the book. 
if you have access to a yard, rope off a 12 by 12. Now, 10 by 10 gets small, but 12 by 12, 15 by 15, just get some stakes. They're only a couple bucks at Menards. Run some rope, and you can set up an area, a list field, and you can just train in it. Train slow, train smart, train but train. And you will find the best way as a an intermediate to a uh, more advanced student of any art, a master even, is uh, is to teach somebody new the absolute basics. It will give back to you. It will build back up. And you will be a better fighter for it. Which I know it shocks, but it, there's a point where people of their own volition will neglect the basics. And range is still key. Tempo, your, your timing, it's still key. Keeping your angles where they're supposed to be. These hyper... You know, Lunging in such a way you can recover forward and backward. It's something you need to always be building back up. And uh, I learned some variants of Tai Chi. And I, being me, I hammered some of my fencing stuff into the motions to build what I build when I, from regenerating. Uh, regenerating. Yes, you know, I'm the doctor. No, uh. But recovering, I've had to start from the bottom with a different broken body <laughs> several times over the years due to injury and conditions. And uh, I was watching somebody and they were talking about Tai Chi and they were doing like one of these longer forms. You know what I mean? Like a 40 motion, 20, 29 or 40 motion, one of the very long Kata style arts. And they're going through it as a class. And way off in the corner was this old guy at the park, and he's doing the same moat stop and reset, and just the exact same one. And if you watch, there'd be a slight variation, and then he'd do it with the slight variation many times and then switch over again. And, you know, some newbies, he doesn't even know the style, and you realize, no, 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 no. He's come full circle. There are gates you travel through in life where uh, to develop, you keep going through the same aspect. And one of them is referred to as the fool's gate. And that's, you become wise. It, through, with experience, you start as a fool. You become wise. And the wiser you get, the closer you get to realizing you're actually a fool. And then you start over. And that process, it's a very Eastern sounding thing, but it's, the, the process of learning, the process of growth, it's circular. Most things in life are. And so you'll find I want the exact motion to do what I want it to do when I do it. I don't need to worry about everything else. You know, for me, mastery is born with efficiency and minimalism. If you look at somebody who is truly skilled, at anything, any physical art, any artistry, any, uh, the ones who are really at that high level, when they're not showing off, because there's things they can do that can be pretty, but when they're just doing it, it's incredibly minimalistic. It's almost all muscle memory. You know, the way they cut the way they reach, the, the blind reach for things because the things are where they need to be. That's that's what mastery is. Mastery isn't, oh, I'm better than you and I know all these secrets are. That is a lie. <laughs> mastery is, I understand that with this sword, I can poke and bring the tip down right over the light on my camera right over the camera. I could turn it off if I want to, but I'm not going to. Without a whole lot of effort. Just that I can move. I know my body. It's amazing. As a martial artist, and yes, Western martial arts are still washed. 
I can reach out my tip, the fingertip just touches it. I didn't have to lean forward and have move. I know my range is right here. That doesn't sound impressive. It sounds uh, simple. It sounds almost childlike. But I will tell you, everyone that I've met who is klutzy is klutzy because of two reasons. Either they are not paying attention. They are not here. Okay? If they're walking, they're in a book. They're on their phone. They're in the clouds thinking about something else. They're not here and they walk into things. Or they've never learned where their body is. And there are cures for that. Now, there is a third if you have an inner ear problem or an actual disability, you get that tested. If that's not that, if it's not a balance issue, if it's not a blood sugar issue, something like that, you just don't know your own body. You don't know where you can reach, where you can't. And there are tricks that can be done. A lot of it comes from, I've learned from uh, working with autistics, working with special needs children. I was a, a para for a, for a school year working with uh, special needs adults, you know, they'll bump into things because they don't have the spatial sense. So you can do things like put an item that gives you feedback, like, say, a weighted necklace. Now I know where my middle is. I might not be able to tell, but now I can tell. If I put my hair back in a ponytail, which I don't have my, my hair tie, but it, lets, it suddenly makes me intimately aware of where the back of my head is. I can feel the angles more. If I put on a... a let me see. No, this might be a mistake, but I don't really care. If I take a rubber band... Let me put that right there so it doesn't get lost. And I put it on my arm. Now I know I have this sudden input of a marker telling me that this is where my hand is. Once you start to know where your feet are, once you start paying attention, whoa. I don't know what that was. My, I just got a very strange error code. But uh, once you start paying attention to where your body is, you're going to get feedback, and you'll be able to do more. And it will it will start to transfer over. That's why if you're starting to learn to fight, you should fight with the exact same length. Pick one weapon, one length, learn it. When you know it inside and out, move on to the next. Because I have a lot of people who want to switch weapons. Blah, 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 blah. I can do that because I've been doing it for 20 years. Other people might not yet. Experience still counts. And I'm hoping that little lessons like this can help people get past their, their hesitant problems. It can help them get past and move forward. Uh, wow. So are, you know, I'm going to check, I'm going to open it up for uh, comments, questions. If anybody has them, we're at the hour and a half mark. I don't want to go over two hours if at all possible. Who caught that? But uh, we don't, like I said, it's, it's been a good, good run. Uh, I just, to train, you have to know the material. And not from the perspective of the, uh, of a student. You have to know it from a presenter. And that sounds, well, obviously, duh, that's how you teach. It's an art. It, it's a side art. It's it's parallel but different. Because, like I said, you can't you can't make it about you. Now there are times where you may have to. You may have a student who has proven themselves to be incorrect on their skill level, but they're being very disrespectful. And one way is to remind them of the difference. Oh, hardest weapon to learn. 
Oh, that's a good question. Okay, the hardest weapon to learn. It it, it requires say that it would be the weapon it, that is most opposite your natural movement. So if you are drawn to a lighter, faster. Oh, okay. If you were naturally drawn to a lighter, faster weapon, uh, a heavier weapon is harder to learn because you have to have the strength behind it to power it. But if you are very, uh, if you're a very large, very strong person, the very small, very light weapons, it's all, it's always going to be hardest to learn the weapon that is diametrically opposed to your body style and experience. Least effective weapon you've seen. Melee. Okay. The least effective weapon I have seen in, in what I've done is somebody brought out, it was a Kit Ray punch dagger. I want to say it was Kit Ray. And, uh, it looked like a bladed octopus had made love to a corkscrew. And <sighs> I know swords. I know weapons. I am very talented at this point of picking up, feeling of balance. And even if it's not textbook, I can take anything, put it in my hand, and usually find a way to make it go. I, My buddy's like, pick this up, and I carefully picked it up. And there were so many, had a blade out at almost every angle and pointed back. It, it was so dangerous, I was uncomfortable putting it down. What weapon would I like to learn? And I, I'm assuming we're keeping to uh, melee weapons because uh, there are a couple firearms I would, out, outside the scope of this conversation, love to get my fat little pudgy uh, hands on. But uh, weapons I'd like to learn that I I'd be interested. Um doesn't happen to uh well that i haven't there are some easter weapons that are fascinating and their styles it's your show no 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 no. i totally appreciate it I, I just want to keep it i'm forcing myself to stay on topic or else this will turn into the next half hour be me lusting after a chiapa arms rhino uh 357 200 ds yeah just a little snubby, but but yeah. Anyway, uh, Steel Fan, I would like to be better. Because I've tried most, you know, that I've never tried, learned, or mastered. Um, I, years ago, I met a gentleman who taught me some Ida. The art of drawing and, and, and sheathing the, uh, the katana. And believe it or not, that might sound odd, but there was an elegance to it. I'm... I would love if I were self-serving to master, not as a combat style, but as a, uh, almost as a meditation. Um, I would love to get back into uh, open. There are several open-handed styles I'd like to play more with. Uh, there were some, uh, uh, there was a practical weaponized version of Tai Chi, which sounds ridiculous. I've only seen a few guys who actually can pull this off, but, I really liked that, uh, you know, open. I think I'm seeing, um, Olympic, th Olympic three weapon. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because I dabbled in saber about a lifetime a half and a half ago and took me many years to get rid of the reflexes of dabbling in saber, but, uh, it was fun. It, it was fun. 
It's just now that I've handled practical weight weapons, the uh, sport weight weapons, if that makes any sense. Oh. Wow. Perfect Guild Knight. Who would be using what weapon? Who would conf compete against who? And who would win each of those bouts? Do we have all night? Okay. Um, the First off, I want everybody to fight. So anyone who would come to a Perfect Guild Knight it would be, I want everybody to have a fight. It might ha you know, have to be a magical 48-hour guild, guild night, but uh, everybody would look. I, you know, I have certain bouts I would love, love, love to see. I would love to see you and uh, Ryan Coker fencing either classical or Olympic, possibly both. It would be interesting to see. I know you would probably beat him Olympic and it would be interesting to see you and him going at it uh, with uh, classical rapier. Um, I just would love to get old man Marco, uh, Sword Sage. I'd love to get him back. I want to see... Oh. Okay. I'm going to get to question five after question four. I would love to see John My. Uh, <sighs> Actually, I'd like to see some knife fighting out of those two. two. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Marco is out west. His his channel's still going, but I miss I miss him. I'd love to see you guys spar some more. Always a heck of a fight. Her sword and uh, her her tortoise shell, probably thirties both. You know, me and her both with the thirty, and I'd probably go rapier, uh, thir uh, thirty dagger. But if we're fighting uh, White Reflection and burning the uh, background songs from uh, <laughs> Gundam Wing Endless Waltz, the karaoke versions need to be playing on loop. Uh, I would love to see um, Amanda come out in and fight uh, uh, Glaive. And I think it might be interesting to see her fight Jim Robertson with him sword and him sword and shield. I would also like to see John Minor and Jim Robertson uh, have a scream a scream a match. I'd like to see you and John uh, Jim Robertson have a scream a match. Um, I want to fight everybody. You know me. I I would love to just be able if I can get keep air in me to fight everyone. And I would love to see uh, Ren Katessa come out. These are active guild members. Um, Bizarre Knight. Everyone is using weapons not normal for them. And what are they using? Um, Boffer Sledgehammers. Boffer Sledgehammer slash Splitting Malls. Everybody. Big old looking anime sledgehammers with squeaky. I want the boffers to squeak. If we're gonna if we're gonna do a tongue and cheek bout, squeaky boffer sledgehammers. I think that would be just full two-handed, like four foot uh, of heft, uh, uh, fiberglass handle maybe, or lightsabers all around. I would love a combat saber practice. Everybody with uh, combat sabers, just for the sheer bizarre, it would be fun. So there's there's that. Uh, let, let me check my messages. Let me see the beautiful. Oh, apparently my 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 net cut out on what she should fight. Uh, I would love to see her fight the equivalent of a small sword. Um, I have something in mind for her that is a modified. It's closest in in D, &D terms to the Elven Thin Blade. You've seen mine. It, it's a, a variant. Uh, a variant foil, but I, I, I have some tweaks for her person. This really, years and years ago, we were working on a style, 
And there's some debate whether it needs to be straight or curved. But I would love to see her get out because it integrated certain dance. It was very flow, possibly and cloak for her because I got messaged. And uh, yes, you know what? I'm going to say that fan. I'm going to say a, a iron, quote, unquote iron or steel fan. And then a small sword as a fighting style for uh, Ren Contessa. That would that would make me incredibly happy to, to see. And I'll fight I'll fight her that style. I I, I fight every style I'm uh, capable of. I I don't teach anything I can't fight, and I can make a fan go. I can make an Emmy Piercer go. I don't like it. Antler daggers get a little funky, but again I. If I can physically schlep it. Um, yes, I did mention firearms. Yes, there are a couple I would like. Uh, I mentioned, I, I will answer that question. Uh, that's a, that was a Kiapa Arms uh, Rhino. I'll admit, one, Vash the Stampede. I don't care. Full on geek. Two, I have wrist damage. And uh, anything that mitigates uh, recoil is something I like. I found out, actually, I like large frame revolvers. I found them very cool. I would like to pull that off. And then a new, either, I don't know if I'd want the, I, I don't think I'd want the X. I want the stock. So probably a Henry X series uh, a lever action rifle. Uh, carbine, actually. It, again, in 357, so that I have ammo compatibility. Also, just about anything in 22 because uh, full size guns in 22 are fun. But that answers the gun question. Uh, yeah, favorite gun I shot. Favorite gun I shot. Hmm. Grab a, 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 uh, um, Remington Target Master from the 20s. Uh, it's single bolt action 22. Uh, because I think that's the most accurate thing I've ever thought. I'm not a big scope guy, which might surprise some folks, but uh, parallax effect, and I don't get along well. Uh, I do tend to like iron sights. Uh, M4 uh, platforms, AR platforms are tanks. I don't terribly like Glocks. Uh, I can make a 19 go, but I'm just not a big double grip. Far rather uh, something closer to a 1911. Uh, maybe a Beretta, Beretta 94. Yeah, I, I, I would like to try one of those because it's single stack. But uh, yeah, um, I can't remember the name of that revolver, but it was a 44 Long Colt, just single action, just simple and beautiful. And I blew through a bu my buddy Steve's ammo, and I, I, I would feel bad about it. I did. Uh, I, I fired a 338 Lapua. Uh, Borderline on gall, that thing. But that's almost cheating because with the scope, you know, a bit of breathing control, you just reach out and toink somebody. That, that was fun. Uh, but yeah, I tend to like light rifles, carbines, and with laws coming up, I've always been uh, geared towards something like a, uh, a lever action, as long as it's got a top-up slide. Uh, not slide, uh, feed. I want to be able to top it up. And I'm I'm a revolver nut, and Trigun ruined me. So the mechanics and aesthetics of something like a, a Chiapo Rhino fascinates me. Uh, the, the sword I want to own. Oh, God. Um, there is a type of Spanish military uh, Bilbao. It's a small sword that came out uh, 1700, late 1700s for, I want to say, the Spanish Navy. It might be the Spanish Army, but I thought it was Spanish Navy. Full-length small sword, but it has essentially a miniaturized cup hilt rapier. Oh, oh, that's that's so sexy. It hurts my soul. Luker 08. Haven't shot a Luker 08. Uh, the 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 broom handle uh the the broom handle has I'm I I'm not sure 
it, that's the case of one hand really likes the 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 vertical grip. The uh, let me let me check something real quick. Sorry, I'm, boop 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 boop. Gotta be entertaining because I want to make sure. Boom. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, I wanted to make sure I'm thinking. Forget the the Mauser. Forget the Mauser for days. The uh, if it's the gun, I'm thinking that yeah, yeah. The the oh god. Okay. Here's the thing with the with the uh, a Luger OA. Aside from a distinctive cocking mechanism, which is really sexy. Uh, that grip angle for days, boys. That grip angle is uh, that is sexy. That is sexy. Uh, I'm I, I like Lugers. I, I like uh, German firearms as a rule, but uh, Lugers, man, that just oh yeah, dead sexy. I'm sorry, I gotta go go the Luger only. Even though the balance or broom handle, if it's and I'm gonna double check so I know what I'm saying, but. Uh, because I will double check. I am moderately, yeah, C96. It, it, yeah. Now, I like the aesthetics of the Mauser is sexy. And it has that Star Wars feel. But, yeah, I got to go Luger 08. Just had to double check the picture so I knew I was thinking the right gun. Because there's a later model of Luger I actually have uh, some history with. But, uh, yeah. I can't remember the name of that revolver. It's, I, I don't think Steve's on. But, uh, Ren, uh, Steve's revolver, the, uh, is it Vaquero? Big 44 Long Colt. Sexy beast. Single action revolver. Bonehead simple. Makes, makes me happy. I also have a mild love affair with, uh, uh, Ivor Johnson's. I would... You know, I would love an Ivers Johnson 38. Uh, the 32s are cool. They just tend to need work. They're cheap. But the idea of a break top is just, it's just sexy. And uh, North American Arms 22. I have a long, long, sordid history with them. I would like them all. Okay, yeah. So close enough with my speech impediment, the Vicero. Uh, knee gun. I actually, I actually felt bad about how much once that got set, because I used to think I was a twenty-two guy, and I am. I love them, but man, a full size just could shoot that for days. Big front. I, I don't really need much of a back sight. Big front sight. So I got off on guns. Um, I do love pistol carbines. I, I'm just I, I adore those, and I adore twenty-two rifle uh, carbine rifles. The uh, the Ruger Police Carbine, the, the PC-9, while heavy as a tank, shoots really well. I like that thing. Uh, got to, but uh, I do love me some firearms. Uh, but, uh, so yeah. Uh, but sword-wise, because a lot, I am... Slowly in the market for a sword, besides the ones I intend to make. But they have to, I'm surprisingly a non-frill guy. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not looking for something that's dead sexy that's going to get... Like, I'm not usually a swept hilt guy. I tend to like cup hilts or more. So, um, that... If I have a sword like that, I'm going to want a dagger to the pairs. Um, but yeah, I, I will take suggestions. I'm... Can I run a Glock? Yeah, I can run a Glock. Do I like them? No. I do find it was interesting what happened with the Taurus 43. Uh, not Taurus 43. The Glock 43 and then the Taurus. Oh, God, I can't remember. The, but that shot better. Uh, and like I said, uh, again, there are things you can't. An, an AR platform is an AR platform is an AR platform. They're sort of so standard they don't bear a lot okay we are about two hours in do we have any other commentary questions anything that uh 
that I can do to further amuse or entertain before it starts getting close to silence. And I'm going to check my messages. Let's see, I got a message. The best knife. We talked about that uh, extensively last week. You may have missed it. Uh, I'm just going to go this. This is the one I wear every day. I carry everywhere. So I should admit that this is my quote, quote, best knife. Because it's a tool, not necessarily a weapon. And yes, I love the delicate pinky hold. The delicate pinky hold is a bit of joy, you know. Boink, one must have manners when when talking about a proper. Uh, uh, let's see, what else do we have? Because I still there are still people who message me through uh, uh, Facebook. <laughs> Favorite non. Oh, um. Favorite offhand thing that isn't a sword or a dagger. That's a good question. Um, a lot of it depends on what I'm doing. If I am a uh, melee, you know, I'll never turn down a uh, a buckler, but I'm very prone to use something like a big stick mechanically. You know, its first part purpose is to hold me up. I've considered making like a mardu where I take a, a SCA heavy basket hilt kind of thing. Mounted on a stick so my hand's protected, and then when I need a stick, I can just block with it. Wow, check it out. Fast and the Furious. <laughs> Anybody watch those movies? They must have like 16 gears. Anyhow, uh, so I hope that answers your question. <sighs> oh, you know, it, I'm two hours of... And I will make sure I mention everything. And yeah... Yeah, um, Bizarro Night, I would love to uh, go back to my days from the Jedi mythos. Very few people will catch that reference, but those who do, I appreciate and miss you. Uh, I would love multiple uh, lightsaber. That would be cheesy fun, but I'd only take it as cheesy fun. Uh, let me make sure I don't... Hardest weapon to learn. Hardest weapon to learn still comes to the first one. Because once you've learned the basics of how to make a roughly three foot long stick go, most of those go. When you learn how to make a, a short, you know, it's they're, they're weapons of a class. I think extreme high levels of mastery, sure, it gets difficult, but they're also refined. You asked who would win. And I didn't tell you who would win in a lot of those bouts, in part because I don't want to offend anyone, and in part because I don't want to uh, build up anybody unnecessarily. I want you to feel challenged and threatened that so, that there's somebody out there who might beat you in your old game. It's good motivation. What do we got going on here? Uh, whoop. Uh, we do not have... Okay, cool. Well, folks, it's past two hours. Ren, especially, thank you for your commentary and, and your beloved support. Uh, Rex, thank you. I'm not sure who my third third viewer is. You never waited in. But I am greatly appreciative of you being here. It is 10 o'clock. I'm getting a little tired, and I haven't had anything to drink this whole time. So, next week... I think we will skip back because, believe it or not, we've almost gone through the book. I'm very pleased with myself. Uh, we will talk a little bit about back setting up, how to set up your training area. Um, we'll talk about melee tactics. And this is if I can't get out to the field. Now, if I can get a setup where I can do this in my garage... Think of questions and weapons you'd like to see, and we'll do that, okay? Otherwise, um, and there's my net glitching. Anyway, I'm just going to keep talking. I hope it's connecting well enough. 
The Simple Sword, Nicholas Tockert. This is available through Amazon. It's also free to download through uh, the Kindle uh, Unlimited. Not for a lot longer. It's going to be probably coming off that service uh, because I need to encourage sales as the coronavirus ends, as the pandemic ends, which I hope it will. Uh, if it doesn't, I'll just keep it on there. You know, you got to get something for uh, what's all going on. And we'll uh, we'll adjourn it. Share this anywhere you can. I'd like to boost the signal. And for the people who are coming back week after week, thank you. Prep your questions for next week. And as always, support your local sword master.